<clears throat> Sorry, I'm still eating that plum from the previous video. TMUSA would like to know what happened to the van in Georgia. Mercy. Okay, I'm going to tell the tale. Where do I begin? Ah, so that morning, I'm looking at a van and I see this G20 in 1995. And looks good, you know. So I call the guy and he talks to me a little bit about it and I ask him some questions. He said, look, hon, I've got to go. I've got 16 other people waiting. i got to start making the calls. I just put it up. And it was true because I looked on the Craigslist and it was put up that day. And uh, I said, well, wait a minute. I said, um, I, I want it. I just need to know some things about it. I said, I don't want to send you money without knowing that, you one, you're a real person. And I asked him for a picture of his license and he didn't want to do that. And I, um, he said, well, why don't you talk to the mechanic that works on my vehicles? And he just looked at that one. So he texted me this guy's number and I was expecting a business, right? It wasn't. A guy just says, hello. I said, is this Jesse? And he said, yeah. And I said, uh, Mr. So-and-so told me uh, to call you uh, about, I wanted some information about him and about the uh, 1995 van. Well, the guy was very cordial. He said, well, I don't have a real business. I used to work for so-and-so, and then I bought myself a couple of lifts and started working for myself. And I do all of his cars and some dealership in the area, their cars. I said, okay. And uh, I said, tell me about the van. And he said, uh, the only thing I had to do was I had to put some coolant in it because the AC wasn't working that good. I'm like, okay, I might have to deal with the air conditioner. And uh, he said, if I'd had the money, I would have liked to buy it because I was thinking of making a camper out of it. I said, yeah, pretty much I'm going to be living in it myself. And I just want to make sure it's not going to leave me on the side of the road. I said, I only have so much money, um, and I, you know, need something to live in, and that will run, you know. So I talked to him, but I still felt uneasy. It wasn't a business. And uh, then he calls me from his bank, and he said, I've got Corinne here, or I guess a, whatever she was, because I called his bank a couple times. Of course they weren't going to give me information about him, but they also wouldn't give me any information about wiring money. And I called them directly. I looked the number up and I called them and I started asking them questions. They said, we've got to give him the information and he has to give it to you or your bank. I said, okay. And I texted him back and told him what they told me. And then he ended up at the bank because he said he was heading that general direction. And so he called me from there and said, I want you to talk to, you know, the, the, so you'll know that I'm actually here and this is my bank. And the woman told me about the routing number and all that. And I said, don't you have an ABA number? They want an ABA wire number. She said, we don't have that. I said, okay, I'll just, you know, talk to my bank about it. And I said, I said to him, and I don't know, things just kept going wiry. And I said, you know, please bear with me. I texted him. I'm, I'm going to, um, definitely going to get it. I, I, I'll send the wire. Um, I, I need to make a couple more calls and then I'm going to go to the bank. So I even found a transporter for $400. would, uh, you know, throw it on the thing and take it to uh, down here to Florida. And uh, so I take the Uber to the bank and I wait for the manager and he sits down. He's such a jovial person, such a sweet guy. I need a tissue. Hang on a minute. And I said to him, uh, I want to send a wire to, um, you know, this information. So he had me write everything down and I said, I've never seen the van. He said, do you know the guy? And I said, no. I said, but I get a picture of his driver's license because he finally sent one to me, but he, he hid the address. Which is very odd because he told me you can find me it, on Google. You could Google me and then 
Google him and uh, the address is there in his name and he told me what his wife's name was and that name was there. You know how you yellow book? I looked up yellow book and I, I looked him up. So uh, finally he capitulates and he gives me um, the address because I'm there at the bank and I'm talking to the manager and I said, but he's got to have your address, he says. Okay, and it's this address and it was the same that was on the yellow book. I just wanted to be sure. And then I said to him, look, I'm going to rent an Enterprise car and I'm coming up there to pick it up. I want to I want to take the trip. I just feel like a road trip and uh, I, I want to drive the van back to Florida. He got really weird, right? Thank God the bank manager was just very weary about the whole thing. And uh, wary, I guess is a better word. And uh, it started to bother me because he kept like knocking it down why why should he care that I'm gonna drive up to pick up the van I said well don't you have an enterprise near you well we're kind of way out here in the country he says and I said well well what's near what's close well this just doesn't seem practical he said you you found somebody for 400 you said to, to transport yeah I said, but really, I, I'd rather just take the road trip and come get it myself. Is there somewhere we could meet? Well, well that's just too much. He says, it's dangerous, and and it's hot up here, and, and you need air conditioning. I'm thinking, what? So, clearly, the air conditioning doesn't work in the van, but was there something else he wasn't telling me? Why would it be dangerous? It's outside of Atlanta. It's south of Atlanta, like an hour in the country. And so I said, okay, um, we'll talk about this after. And I hung up and I look at the guy and he said, let's look, Google this address. And he Googles the address and he said, I don't know what this is, but there's nothing out there. He said, look, he said, I'm not trying to ruin a good deal for you. I'm not trying to discourage you or even tell you what to do. But he said, I've seen too many scams. And yeah, they sound nice and, and they, they give you the mechanic's name and, and oftentimes they're working together. And I thought about that. And he said, I, I apologize. I, I, I hope you don't think I'm, you know, you know, going over the boundaries. And I said, no. I said, you're just kind of like giving brotherly advice to like someone like your sister. And he said, exactly. And he said, I'd hate to see you lose all that money. He said, you have time. And he said, the Lord will find you a van. And I said, you know, since you feel uneasy, my son feels uneasy, my daughter-in-law feels e uneasy, I'm going to take this as a sign not to take the van. You can cancel the transaction. And then I left. And I called my son, and he came and he picked me up at the bank, and uh, we went to Home Depot. And that's the whole story. And I texted the guy, and I said, I'm very sorry, but my bank manager feels very uneasy about it. And like he said to me, once we send this wire, the money's gone. So I said, yeah, let's just leave it as it is. And he said, try to find something locally. And so I'm going to try to find something locally. Who knows? Maybe I'll find a miracle. Maybe I'll find exactly what I want for the exact price I want without needing much work. Let's hope so. If not, there's got to be something out there for me, right? So I think I was more sad because, quite frankly, the truth of the matter is, is I listened to Uncivilized, and one of her videos was about the hardships of van life. She's very upfront. 
I started thinking about that and that's what really bothered me and that's what really made me sad and made me cry and that video I think I've about uh, it'll be probably be the third third one down I don't know I can't remember now which one it was from the name of it sorry but um yeah it it just made me sad that I'm losing all of the convenience that a 64 year old really would like running water lights electricity well that's lights running water lights air conditioning heat I can work out but air conditioning you really can't work that out and right now I'm inside my house with air conditioning on and I'm hot holy moly you just wouldn't believe how hot it is down here even at night it's like oh, I hate it I hate it I'm a New England girl and this is killing me Ugh. and the thought that I have all this to do with the porch in the shed in the heat of the summer it's mid-June how am I ever gonna manage I don't know I gotta go through a lot of things. I gotta figure this out. I'm waiting on a storage facility that's the cheapest one in the area, and no one's calling. It would cost way too much to take it all out of state. It just isn't worth it. I don't think. You know, I haven't looked up a lot of the books and things like that, but I guess I'm gonna have to get off my uh, harump and do something about it. Yeah. I can, you know, start at four in the morning when it's just slightly steamy. I gotta go. I'm tired. I need to eat something before I go to bed. I don't know what I'm gonna eat. Everything is like kind of heavier and, or needs to be cooked and uh, I'll show you how I make chili next time I make chili, which won't be tomorrow because I'm gonna be babysitting again. I'm trying to help the kids so Maggie and Mike can work together to get that bedroom done and move in. And besides, Finn loves me. And uh, I'll tell you all about Scam Likely <laughs> tomorrow. It's a joke between me and Finn, and it's just kind of cute and funny. And I'll try to take some footage tomorrow without showing Finn. It's not always easy, but I'm going to try. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it, and that was my van life story, and that's it for tonight. Bye!